Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're looking at this eBay, AliExpress, whatever you want to call it, signal generator because I think I've blown it up. Well, not blown it up, but I think I've damaged it by accidentally transmitting into it. But, as you say, it looks like it's working. Well, it's not. It's doing something strange. So let's have a look at what it's doing. So you can see we're on minus 70 dB. So that should give us a signal 9, which it does. And now we drop the dB. And as soon as we get to 101, the signal just drops off. Do you see? Right on 101. And then all the way down to 132. It's pretty unresponsive. You can hear it. But the main thing is around 101. Now this shouldn't do this. I can only think I've transmitted into it by accident and blown something in there. So you can see it's quite a quite a definite signal drop around the 101 area. So let's bear that in mind for a little bit later on. So here's another signal generator I got, just in case I couldn't repair this one. And you can see around 101, it's actually working as it should be. You can hear a pop where something's changing over. But we're not getting that big signal drop. And the signal from 100 up to minus 70 is as it should be. So as a comparison, something's not right with the other one. So we're going to have a look at it. So let's get it apart and see what wonders are in here. And of course, there's not much. Standard LCD display. It's parallel interface. A ribbon cable. Going to what looks like a board with not a lot on it. But we turn it over and we have some more bits and pieces. So let's see if we can have a guess at what's wrong. So we have STM32F processor. We have a couple of other RF components here and there. Regulator. And then we have these two components here, 4302s. Which seem to be linked in series and go into the RF socket. We have a 78ML5 regulator. So I think we've got 3.35 volt regulators there. But it's these I'm interested in. Because they're connected directly to the antenna. Now if I've actually transmitted into this and done some damage. I reckon this is the first port to call. This 4302 IC. But what is this 4302 IC? Well, after a bit of digging about, I found the data sheet. And you can hear it says it's a 50 ohm RF digital attenuator 31.5 dB. Now going back to where it was faulty, it starts off at minus 70 dB. And as soon as it hits 101 and 102, it goes faulty. And there's your 31 dB. So looking at the package type. It's the same. So we've got frequency DC to 2.2 gigs. That's fine. And then we've got some other data about it, the chip's characteristics and its attenuation properties. But what I'm interested in is this pin configuration. As you can see, with all the other bits and bobs of pins. We have RF1 and RF2. Obviously we've got data and lock and all that. But if we look at the how they are on the board, you can see that there's capacitors coupling the RF1 and RF2. So that kind of looks like it's the same chip for me. 
Let's have a look what RF1 and RF2 does. So the RF ports. Doesn't say which way round it is. Maybe the bi-directional. Oh, doesn't matter which way. But I think this is the chip. So some other bits and pieces about the, the actual chip itself. Giving it, saying that it's serial programmable and all that. I think this, this is where we should be looking. This 31.5 digital attenuator. Because for me, the fault is happening around 31.5 dB. So, pretty confident it's this. So there's the chips under the microscope. You can see the RF ports. Now there's two of them. So it's 50-50 which one it's going to be. But seeing this one's connected to the antenna, we're going to try this one. Let's a quick look at some of the other ICs. But we're going to do this one that's connected directly to the antenna socket. So it's got a bit of flux on it. Get the hot air gun out about 280 degrees. Give it a blast and off it comes. Now I'm not going to prep any of the pads, clean them up, put new solder on them or anything. I'm just going to drop the chip straight on top of it. But before we do that, we're going to add a little bit more flux and we're just going to heat up the area. Just see if we can level that solder, uh, solder out a little bit more. Yeah, it's levelled it out a little bit. So I have ordered some of these chips from AliExpress, which was probably the only place I could actually find them. They're relatively cheap, about seven pounds for ten of them. Thought if I get some extras in stock, it might be handy if I ever accidentally transmit into one of these again and blow one up. So this thing is tiny very very small so there's our new chip so we're just going to pop it on and start the soldering process and of course as soon as I put the hot air on it it blows off so we'll try that again with a bit of flux this time. So we have our chip somewhere. There it is. Correctly orientated. And this time I'm going to hold it a little bit longer. Just so the surface tension of the solder actually grabs onto it. So hot air gone a little bit hotter. You can see the solder's now starting to melt. So we'll just push it into place. Get it lined up as best we can. Give it a push down. Everything looks good. You can see it shimmy into place. Excellent. So hopefully that's soldered in. Just having a quick look at some of the connections. Everything looks like it's taken because the actual pads are underneath, not on the edges. So I think everything's soldered there. I've not blown any components off the board. So let's test it whilst it's still in pieces. So minus 70 dB, signal 9. We'll start decreasing it, and yes, 
it's working as intended. Excellent. So yeah, we've not got the strangeness around 101 um, dB again. It's moving up and down as it should. So let's have a look at it with the radio. And as you can see, marked improvement from when we started off this. Yeah, you can still hear the pop around 101, 102. That must be when the chips actually, well, the processor tells the other chip to kick in and attenuate the signal further. So what we can gather from this is the first chip does the initial 31 dB attenuation and then as soon as we hit 101, 102 the other chip then takes over whilst the first chip is fully attenuated the um, second chip then takes over and attenuates it further so I'll just try it on a different frequency and yeah excellent So I think that's a successful repair. So now I know what to do if I accidentally transmit into one again and blow it up. But anyway, hope you like this short video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Join the Facebook group. And we'll see you in the next video.